My name's Terry Hughes. I'm a, an ecology professor based at James Cook University in Townsville. Australia in many respects is the, the lucky country when it comes to coral reef science and coral reef management. If you think about it, most coral reefs, and there's, there's lots of them between about 30 degrees north and south of the equator, they occur overwhelmingly in developing countries, about 90 of them. And almost uniquely among those coral reef countries, Australia is, uh, is wealthy. Uh, it has stewardship of about 10% of the world's coral reefs. And let's face it, not too many people live here compared to small and often overcrowded island nations in the Caribbean and, and throughout the Pacific. And so that, that means that uh, Australia has become a mecca for coral reef science. The centre that I direct here in Townsville has 155 PhD students all working on coral reef science enrolled this year. And in 2008, they came from 42 countries. Um, if we've learned one thing over the last 30 years studying coral reefs, it's, it's how to kill them. And that recipe for how to kill a reef is important because it points to the solutions. How do you avoid coral reef degradation? So it's a very simple recipe. It's sort of analogous to how you look after the lawn in your back garden. If you want to convert a healthy coral reef with lots of corals into a degraded reef that's covered with fleshy, slimy seaweed, you do a couple of simple things. Firstly, you take away the lawn morse, which is so-called herbivorous fish that eat seaweed. If you reduce their abundance by overfishing them, then that promotes algal blooms. And the other thing you do is you fertilize the lawn by adding nutrients. And so an increasing problem around the world, in, for coastal reefs at least, is runoff from land of sediment and nutrients, usually caused by changes in land use practices. So that points really to the solution. If we can control water quality, which we can do quite locally at the scale of a river catchment, and if we can manage fish stocks, and one tool that's commonly used in Australia is through no-take zones or green zones on the Great Barrier Reef. If we can do those two things locally, then we can make it much less likely that when something bad happens to the corals, like a cyclone, that they'll recover and the corals will uh, regenerate. Somebody recently asked me, a perfect stranger, what I did for a living. And uh, so I puffed out my chest proudly and, and said I'm a coral reef ecologist. And she looked at me and said, gosh, that's terrible. It must be awful. And that really floored me as a, a reaction because you know, usually people say, wow, that's kind of cool. I bet you go diving in the Barrier Reef all the time. And it made me realize that um, as a community of, of researchers, we've certainly got the message across that coral reefs around the world are under threat, particularly from overfishing and, and climate change. But I think we also need to be very careful that that message doesn't get translated into coral reefs are doomed and they'll all be dead in 25 or 30 years. I don't think that's the case. Um, I think we can learn a lot by studying reefs that have become degraded and comparing their biology to reefs that are still perfectly healthy. And if we take the lessons from that comparison, I think the prospect for reefs into the future is actually pretty good.